After the naval invasion of Okinawa has begun, Japan is sending a large troop transport with a relatively lightly guard to reinforce the uh, to reinforce the, uh, the their positions with troops from Formosa. We've got Winslow and Little from the screening group intercepting the convoy, and they're up against the Usugumo and the Yamagumo, two uh, Japanese uh, Nokaze destroyers, Nokaze class destroyers that. I think we s is pretty much the standard type that we've seen. So it'll be destroyer on destroyer. Winslow is a porter class, relatively modern. Uh, Little is still a modernized Wix class. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, uh, it appears we have... Yeah, we've got the Japanese destroyers. So um, Winslow, has, Winslow has dropped her torpedoes. And uh, we'll see if that makes any difference. And little might be dropping as well, but we do have to maneuver for effect. Uh, I think with uh, with this destroyers, torpedo hits are going to be relatively unlikely. So more, uh, I'm more interested to closing into gun range with uh, uh, with Winslow, especially because she has got a fair amount of five-inch guns. But we do have to be obviously wary of uh, Japanese torpedoes incoming as well. Uh, well. Let's see what we can do here. I might. Uh, just hold off with any further torpedoes. Uh, there are... Yeah, there is a Japanese torpedo spread incoming. I think a little needs to needs to detach. And she needs to turn into that. Because uh, she would be at risk of, uh, of running into to those torpedoes. So a little hard to port. And try to dodge that torpedo there. Ooh, that's going to get awfully close. Can we? Yes. Oh, no, she has taken a torpedo hit, but it's done minimal damage, actually. Uh, Winslow needs to turn into the torpedoes as well. So hard to port for you. She has taken a torpedo hit. She is flooding slightly in the rear, but it, has, it was actually relatively minimal damage. So um, that went surprisingly well. I would have thought these Japanese torpedoes would have done a lot more damage. So now it's about... Now it's uh, it's the task of running them down. They have they seem to have avoided most of the torpedoes. Have we managed a torpedo hit? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think these were just gun hits. So a little and Winslow now giving chase. And Winslow obviously should have the advantage in guns here. A little still has still has uh, still has torpedoes ready. So if we can get a little <laughs> a little closer. And she can she can still launch those. So after the initial drop, uh, they should not have an awful lot of torpedoes left. Let's concentrate fire, actually, on one of the destroyers. And they are smoking up, so we'll try to we'll try to get uh, even closer and get them with the guns. Actually, this one, um, she might still have torpedoes away. Uh, let's make sure that if we still have torpedoes ready, we'll fire them. I'm suspicious of that destroyer here. So a little is already going to go evasive, just in case. We'll get little to turn around, while um, uh, Winslow is going to drop down to 25 knots and uh, trying to close in further, just in case they have launched torpedoes anywhere. Okay, Winslow needs to stay on the ball here and get all her guns on target. Yeah, there we go. Now we're starting to land hits with uh, Winslow's guns. She's the more dangerous gunboat, definitely. So Little is just turning around to draw some fire. And I think Winslow's got the range now on the Yamagumo and is starting to hit for effect. Okay, there are still friendly torpedoes incoming, but I'm not sure they're going to hit, I don't think they're going to hit the Yamagumo, but that is going to force the Yamagumo into evasive maneuvers, which is going to give Winslow a perfect opportunity to flatten her into the broadside. And a little is uh, coming in, coming in hot now as well. So that hopefully gives Winslow a chance to land a couple of good hits. Not sure why she's firing armor piercing, to be honest. Um, I don't know if these things are more uh, a better armored than uh, than they should be, but uh, okay, little you're getting you're getting a bit too close now. That is a 
relatively dangerous position if any of the Japanese destroyers has torpedoes ready. Okay, that's one down. And that was not the Yamagumo. Uh, something has been hit. I think we've, we've managed to land a, a hit on the transports that we haven't even seen yet uh, with, with, uh, with torpedoes. So I'm not sure what that was, but uh, we definitely hit something there. And I think Yamagumo is going to go down soon. She's flooding from, from the stern. We get little to drop down to 25 as well and turn about. And uh, Porter gives chase. Yamagumo should be done for. We can get Porter back up to flank speed, 35 knots, just to catch up with the uh, Japanese destroyer. And little to turn around and do the same thing. Uh, please don't torpedo each other. And that's the Yamagumo done. That just leaves the Usugumo, which I think is trying to run away potentially. They have done a good job so far uh, protecting the transports. I mean, that's to be said. But um, they're not going to, they're not going to get away. And we're going to get a little back up to flank speed as well. While uh, Winslow is going to go and overtake her. And she is sinking as well, which means we can get the two destroyers to form up again. And now we just have to find the transports. And there they are. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if these are armed, but uh, there should be a fair amount of them. So let's get, uh, let's get into closer range and then... Um, then we can uh, launch some torpedoes in the general direction of them as well. Although I, I don't actually think we might we need the torpedoes. I think the five inch guns are going to be sufficient in cleaning up these transports. So that uh, troop convoy is now completely unprotected. Yeah, and the five inch guns are making an absolute wreck of these transports. So there's not an awful lot left. And um, yeah, I don't think these are actually armed. So probably, yeah, these seem to be just merchant ships with some AA guns on them. So they, they don't really have any, any defense. And there we have it. A full group of troop transports plus two escorting destroyers sunk and relatively little chance to defend themselves. With the Empire of Japan showing weakness, South Korea is up, rising up against the occupiers and uh, is fighting for liberation. We will do what we can to support them. After heavy fighting, the Japanese garrison in Okinawa has been defeated. The Empire of Japan is now facing the prospect of an uprising in Korea, as well as the American occupation forces in Okinawa on the home islands. And uh, I don't think they will be standing very much longer. With the war against Japan winding down and uh, negotiations underway, it's become abundantly clear that we have uh, several problems with our existing fleet. First of all, uh, in the world, we are starting to have a, an increasing amount of uh, colonial possessions, so to speak, uh, that need to be secured. Uh, as well as commitments in the Pacific that require us to quickly shift uh, naval forces into hotspots. China, by the way, is more than unhappy about our presence in Okinawa and has made that known pretty well as well. So we can't stay here forever, lest we risk uh, conflict with China as well, which we are not after. It's really just about putting Japan down. So uh, while the research is mainly focused around big guns, we don't quite have... Uh, reach the 18 inch guns yet we've got mark 1 17 inch guns but uh, we're still a little bit behind the other nations in terms of uh, in terms of our big gun firepower that said the old battleships are starting to well age and the kansas class that we've uh, that we have been building is uh well, extremely expensive, extremely large, and uh, it takes forever to construct these things. So we do need to have a program to replace the aging battle fleet, as well as, uh, well, we're quite good with the light cruisers, probably a more modern heavy cruiser and a more modern destroyer as well. But let's begin with the battleships. 
and uh, create something new here. And I'm thinking of uh, something so, something significantly smaller because uh, these things tend to get really expensive and take forever to build, but something a little faster. So let's see what we can build here uh, that is not so huge. Uh, I think the smallest would be a 56,000 ton displacement battleship on this hull. Uh, so maybe we go with this one and go for a minimum displacement. It's... Uh, what's the minimum here? 47,500. 47,500 displacement. Let's see what the cost is coming because the, the Kansas comes down to 1.8 billion dollars. So we'll see if we can undercut that a little bit. I don't think we can make that any smaller than that. Uh, definitely no treaty battleships here. <laughs> None of these holes can can actually We'd have to go down to dreadnought holes to, to get that sort of thing. But uh, I'm thinking of, uh, let's call it a North Carolina class of battleships. And this hull can do uh, 32 knots of speed. Uh, it's, uh, let's put her at 30 for starters. And we'll see, we'll see what, that is going to, what that is going to look like. Well... Uh, I'm thinking, well, uh, can we fit a modern tower onto it? Yes, we can. And we will see, this is a, this is a chubby little battleship. <laughs> well, well, we'll see what we can do here. I am thinking 16 inch, uh, definitely not the 17 inches, but we've now got Mark II 16 inch, so very conventional we can put one up here and then a relatively conventional uh, nine gun layout nine gun 16 inch layout uh, the idea here is to produce uh, enough of these things that we can replace most of the fleet as we as we go so can we fit this secondary tower onto here we cannot uh, this one fits so let's put that as close as we possibly can and see what we can do about the funnels. So obviously oil fuel and but we're going with uh, we're balanced boilers for now. We can put, we could put turbo electric in. But, uh, let's see what that looks like. Uh, that is relatively modern but has a, runs the risk of ship flaws. We'll, we'll check We'll check about that later, if we need that actually. So uh, we can put one funnel in and we might not even need balanced boilers because uh, uh, it, it does reduce the smoke interfer interference quite a bit, but it, it brings up the cost. Uh, natural is not quite enough. 35 induced might work well and that's at 665 663 balance is a bit cheaper uh, what if we went down to geared turbines uh, that is significantly cheaper and with balanced boilers uh, we are still good so i think that's the better choice here we do have a bit of an aft weight offset however but uh, that's something we can work with later on Let's get, uh, let's get everything in place first. Uh, I do want uh, a, I do want this to be cost effective. So we'll leave that on a semi-balanced rudder. And uh, hydraulic steering should be enough. Now we could go with, uh, we could go with the latest armor here, but that is going to drive the cost up. Let's see, that's 600, uh, 600 million, uh, 540 million, or 489 million. So it's the homogeneous plates, uh, non-cemented, with face hardened on top. Uh, or, uh, or we're starting to see ship flaws here as well. But uh, more expensive, uh, more expensive overall. Uh, we definitely don't want the the latest because that just drives up the cost too much and uh, it's not the the funding is a problem it's the construction time so we do need we do need a fair few of these things to counter the british so at the same time we do maybe 
Maybe we'll go with Krupp four for now. That is a good. Uh, that is a good. A good middle ground here. Uh, latest barbets. Uh, torpedo damage protection. We probably don't need a huge amount because we are mostly going to be not fighting. Well, let's go with three. Uh, double hole bottom definitely. Uh, reinforced bulkheads and uh, flooding protection and we can have we can have a turtle back armor uh, uh, an armored citadel or an all or nothing armor scheme uh, and again i'm looking at the price tag here uh, ship construction time and the ship construction time as well because so what would the turtle back look like uh, turtle back 781 uh, 759 or 820 I think that that is a good uh, that is a good turtle back armor scheme is a good compromise also when it comes to ship flaws now standard ratio please <laughs> and uh, we'll see what we actually have here we have cordite 3 that we can put in and TNT 3 now we c will these are still mark uh, these are still mark two guns so they're still relatively uh, they're still relatively uh, relatively early but we do need a decent coincidence range finder uh, do i need hydrophones on these things potentially not because they are not going to be sailing alone so i'm not sure i do need hydrophones on them it does help with torpedo spotting but uh, that that's what I have. That's what I have escorts for. Uh, we'll 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 put we'll put a we we'll put actually we'll put a passive hydrophone on it, and we put a uh, radio direction finder on it as well. Okay, let's see what we can do with let's see what we can do with the armor scheme. But before that, we actually have to put some secondaries on here. So five inch secondaries. We actually have quad barreled five inch guns. I just want to see what that looks like. Can I fit those anywhere? Um, uh, yes, I can actually. Quad barrel five inchers. Uh, these are Mark IVs. So they weigh 100 tons compared to uh, compared to 76 tons on the uh, on the th on the three barreled. Uh, given that we are maybe a little short on weight, I might do the armor plating first, and then we see what we can do with about, what we can do about the secondaries. So how much we can still we can still fit in here. Uh, what do we have in terms of in terms of shells? Uh, right now we have uh, semi armor piercing shells. We probably want uh, what what's our penetration here at? At what ranges are we going to hit stuff? Uh, 10,000 meters, 25 inch penetration. That's probably not enough. So um, what is semi-ballistic looking like? And that gets us to, come on game, show me. Okay, game doesn't want to show me. There we go. Uh, that just gets us to th uh, 32 inches of, penetra of belt penetration. So if we have, we've got 142% armor quality. So if we, if we had a 15 or 16 inch, that would be uh, just about enough to get through the belt at 10,000 meters. Um, and we can probably put, uh, how do we have enough penetration on the HE to actually, no, incendiary HE shells are not going to be doing anything. But the, yeah, if we we're using the high capacity HE shells just in case we are facing anything that uh, can actually that actually is relatively lightly armored with the uh, with the 16 inches, then we can uh, then we can 2.4 inches pen. That should be enough to blast the destroyer out of, out of the water if necessary. Uh, shouldn't be, but uh, I think that's a good uh, that's a good set here. So we we do have 32 inches, which means if we had a 16 inch belt, then we would be protected against our own guns at 10,000 meters, which is kind of what I'm after. So 
Uh, how about deck penetration at 10,000? Uh, 7.6 inches. So main deck should definitely be more around... Uh, we got 140 armor, so uh, 5 inch main deck might actually almost be a little a little under um, can we do eight inch main deck oh, that's getting really heavy very quickly and i haven't put secondaries on yet so we do have to do that still but uh, can we get seven inches forwards and aft on the belt and uh, four inches forward and aft on the deck and we put 14 on the conning tower, 2 inch on the superstructure, and we're almost out here actually. And we haven't put secondaries on yet, so we might have to reduce the deck, the armor a bit. Let's get the main deck down to 7, and the forward and aft deck down to 6. That leaves us a little bit of space, but we haven't done anything on the citadel. Conning tower down to 12, and main belt down to 15. That starts uh, starts working. Uh, what if I throw down the hydroacoustics? Not making a huge amount of difference. Um, oh, we haven't put any auxiliary engines in. That's something we need to do. Uh, there we go. Yeah, not not an awful lot of space for secondaries here. Let's put a bit of citadel armor in. Uh, definitely want uh, um, five inch first belt. Uh, two and a half inch second belt looks about right and can we get three inch on the first deck and two inch on the second deck uh, that is maybe that's uh, uh, maybe two inch on the first and one inch on the second okay that leaves us with about just under a thousand tons okay we can make the turrets a little less a little less sturdy they definitely don't need that much and that gives us a bit uh, that gives us a bit of, uh, of wiggle room to fit a couple of secondaries in here so five inch well we could put a f couple of the five inch quads honestly but uh, i don't know how many mounts we're gonna get here okay so that's a set of five inch quad guns and uh, that would actually be okay. I'm I'm happy with that to be honest. That's a f that means we can we can still put a little bit more into armor. But first we have to actually get uh, deal with the weight offset here. So let's see if we can move the uh, forward gun turret a little bit more towards the blast shields here, uh, towards the wash shields here, and see if we can make the superstructure a bit more forward. There we go. And we still have an aft weight offset, so let's move the rear superstructure a bit closer. And that's about as far as we can push it just using the superstructure. Now we could, that's helping. Uh, can we move can we move the uh, five inches more forward? No, we don't have another mount for those. But we could put uh, uh, five inch twin barreled guns forward. Seriously, these look like mounts for, for, for guns that we can put still. Um, not, not quite. Okay, so, so in that case, let's get back to the quad mounted five inches. And uh, we'll finagle a little bit with the armor to get the weight offset going. And we still have a little bit of wiggle room for further upgrades in the future. So we do have a, an, an aft weight offset. So we do need to slap a bit more, uh, slap, slap a little bit more uh, uh, armor on the forward belt. Uh, and that should help relatively significantly. But we are obviously now uh, getting very close to the uh, displacement limit. So, and four and a half inches forward deck, that's it. Uh, we don't have an awful lot of space left, but uh, we've got a good set of secondaries here. Uh, we do have, uh, we, on a relatively reasonably small hull, with uh, a total cost of a billion, unfortunately, which is still less than the uh, less than the Kansas, which came in at 1.8. So we can probably still get that done in about two years or so. So that's probably the best compromise we can make here. 
That's the last double check that I've got everything. I think uh, I am happy with that. Decent armor, good speed, and uh, a bit more expensive than I was hoping for, but it's a ballast balanced ship, and that's the North Carolina class of battleships. So we're probably going to retire uh, all of the older classes of battleships now. And uh, except, uh, up, and up to the Colorados, we're going to leave the Colorados around, but uh, I want to get off the 14 inch, uh, the 14 inches. And uh, so that means I'm going to have to build a fair amount of them. So let's see how much we can actually build. Okay, we've got almost uh, 400,000 uh, tons capacity. So uh, we should be able to build ourselves 400,000 tons. So these are 40. Um, how many do we actually need to just to replace them? Uh, we have, if we are sorting by sorting by type, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine battleships uh, to replace. Kansas and New Hampshire are, on, are, are under construction and Colorado is, is uh, the only one of her class. So um, yeah, let's, uh, let's get, let's get nine, nine North Carolinas underway. It simultaneously that should be okay capacity wise uh, maybe eight I think eight should be enough well, let's start look uh, yeah eight was correct so uh, our shipyards are fully occupied at this point and uh, we have eight North Carolina class battleships in under construction where are they there we go and that means uh, we are, yep, that, that means we are going to be in two years time, uh, we are going to be able to replace the heavyweight, uh, the, to replace the heavyweights. Uh, we are building a couple of ships for, for other people, but not an awful lot. So it's mostly just a couple of destroyers. So we don't have an awful lot of, uh, of capacity left, but we are building uh, to increase our shipbuilding, shipbuilding capacity. And once that's, once, that's happening, uh, once that's happened and we have some more capacity, I'm gonna start actually building uh, a new set of heavy cruisers, most likely. Um, thinking something like a Baltimore. I know it's been requested for a long time, but I wanted to wait until we have the, uh, until we have the technology and I'm not sure where exactly the um, where exactly the uh, uh, the auto loaders are. Is it in the, it should be in the turret mechanism? Yes, it's in the turret mechanisms. So um, I might put a second priority on that for now, in re terms of research, to uh, see that we can get uh, we can get slightly better slightly better auto loaders and uh, then that goes into the Baltimores. After many months of fighting and uh, many losses in October 1926, the Japanese Empire has agreed to sign a peace deal. Uh, we have taken gained control over several of the over several of their uh, military outposts in the Pacific, uh, as well as uh, Southeast Korea is now under American control. The Koreans themselves are still in the middle of an uprising and uh, Japan has signed an agreement to no longer interfere in uh, South American politics. The United States Navy has proven itself as a worthy adversary in uh, their first serious test uh, in the 1920s. That said, our relationship with China is uh, consistently decreasing, which uh, due to our heavy naval presence in the Pacific. So we will relocate, uh, the fl we will redistribute the fleet, uh, get, in, get it into a better position, and then um, finally work towards a, an improved Navy in uh, the peacetime that hopefully lasts for quite a while.